Welcome back to Hour 3, our Preparedness Civil Defense Earth Changes panel, Specialty Hour. And, of course, uh, John Moore at the top of the hour has his own program over at Republic Radio, 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, Monday to Friday. Uh, John, what's the latest uh, reports that you're having? Well, Dr. Bill, thank you. Good to be here. Um, one of my confidential sources has verified is from uh, two independent sources that all surgeons nationwide that uh, work at hospitals have been told that even when they're off duty, if they get a phone call, they're expected to show up at their hospital within 15 minutes of getting the phone call. We're right. not sure. Uh, You're talking about the, all surgeons, uh, both, med- both military and non-military? Right, civilians as well. We, <clears throat> we think this is coming from the Department of Homeland Security. We're not positive. We don't know who would have authority to put out that kind of order otherwise and how they could even order civilians to do anything. Well, but, I, I know that they have a, uh, executive orders, and um, they notified us when we went to our trauma training even if I'm retired, they keep track of all of us so that they know that they can have people, including, by the way, people who need to understand they're training thousands of veterinarians to treat medical people, and they have medical uh, manuals, actually, how to for veterinarians to do things like uh, tracheostomies, deal with medical, damaged medical uh, personnel, or injured civilians. So all right. Well, the second they're, they're, thing, uh, yeah. we talked about this privately uh, a new take. I spent two hours with a Native American elder yesterday, and uh, he suggested a new take on these FEMA camps. Now, the FEMA camps that we've heard about for so many years, they have a capacity of maybe 1.8 or 2 million people, which would be about one half of 1% of the people in this country. He says, well, John, consider this. Maybe these camps are set up for the following people. Um, healthy men and women, Caucasians between 18 and 40 years old, with 120 plus IQ that are uh, healthy, athletic, and have good education. The point being, this would be a, a preservation of the gene pool and DNA. In other words, it's like a gene bank thing or a continuity of society by having at least a seed of the population that would uh, be able to carry on civilization with a vastly reduced population. Exactly. And from my knowledge, just from military recruitment, uh, that two million people would be a big chunk <laughs> of the folks in that age group that are uh, healthy, athletic, and have IQs above 120. It's probably darn near most of them. Right. Now, have you heard anything further about uh, the earth changes occurring uh, or the approach of the, we call it, I call it the Passover star. Some people call it Planet X. I like to refer to it. It's not a planet. It's a red dwarf star with a right. debris field of objects that's orbiting around it. Well, We had recently, by the way, a report, and I wanted to say this, we had a report that Jupiter was hit with a very large asteroid here just last week. We also have a report of a 800 uh, meter asteroid that's hit, supposed to hit Antarctica in 2012. And this is a British Columbia professor who actually reported this, and it was taken two days later off his site. It was actually reported on the PAH, uh, sorry, phas.ubc.ca website for two days. And it was taken they're using a balloon uh, bore larger aperture sub-millimeter telescope or blast at McMurdo Station in Antarctica. They were later, later tracking, uh, tracked by the Canadian uh, France Hawaii telescope on Mauna, Mauna Kea. So um, do you have any, uh, any information on this, uh, Ann or John? Well, uh, I hear and, and see the same reports that you do, Dr. Bill, and... Um Eventually, there's going to be something come up that we know is real and is verifiable, and we may be real close uh, we, to that we, point. But we know that the next February, which is my birthday, believe it or not, the 15th, there's an object supposed to be 197 uh, feet across that's going to whip past the Earth at under 5,000 uh, miles off the Earth's surface. And they took all the data off now, so as Ann said before, they keep recalculating it, getting closer and closer, and it's with an error or margin of error that could indicate as high as a chance of one in a hundred of striking the Earth. Now that's large enough to take out Luxembourg or to have a major climatic effect on the planet. Right. So, um, you know, we're dealing with things that that they say they can track these objects. They're, they're not even tracking objects that are big enough to cause major cataclysms on the planet that can whip past. So, um, you know, the fact is they probably know more than they, they're saying but they're not saying. Like the magnetic field flux field is changing rapidly. The North Pole is migrating at an ever-increasing pace towards Siberia. The ozone right. layer is 
thinning primarily because of decrease in oxygen and a decrease in the magnetic flux field. So, you know, we're being told lies and more lies. And then, of course, they want to put carbon taxes on us. They're going to start it here November 14th here in Hawaii. And they want to do carbon taxes if Obama gets back in. His first policy, green policy, is green energy, green industries. I mean, you got two maniacs. you got Obama, who won't probably support the Jews in doing a nuclear attack on Iran, but he wants to give us social, I call eco-communism. And then we got um, Romney, who will probably attack... Iran and Syria that could precipitate a thermonuclear and biological weapons exchange. Well, it's a very strange world and getting stranger by the minute, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, Ann, well, what uh, reports do you have? Well, I'm just, uh, I, <laughs> this first I heard that um, surgeons across the United States have been put on alert, although that, I guess the surgeons I know wouldn't, uh, yeah, I guess that's something you keep pretty closely tight to your chest. That's not something you you would tell uh, people that you just casually know anyway. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a national security thing. Apparently they say if you've been an ATLS certified doctor, meaning trauma, even if you're retired, you can be called up immediately. And it's actually something that they keep track of everybody, including myself. I haven't got a notice yet, but I would assume that they uh, are going to be tight enough if there is a national disaster, they'll not only call doctors, but veterinarians to do fill in those roles as well, or PAs and nurse practitioners that are trained in trauma as well. Well, I did, uh, one of the ladies that I know, her daughter, uh, went back to work after having a child, and after uh, delivering a baby, and uh, six weeks later she went back to work, and she was told that she needed uh, another class, and so I'm beginning to think that, yeah, they want, they want the, uh, the nurses to be as highly educated as possible, too. Yeah, they're trying to upgrade them. Um, John, do you have John? Do you have any new reports on uh, Dr. McKinney's work on uh, Plasma Universe in terms of uh, the approach of the uh, Nemesis Dwarf Star? Or we call I call it the Passover Star. Uh, anything new on magnetic fields? Uh, anything else going on in space weather? Well, nothing new other than the fact that Professor McKinney continues to monitor these events and is, shares a concern that we all have that we're in a fast-changing world. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, and talk about the sinkholes. You guys sent me a bunch of data about sinkholes and about some very serious concerns in terms of the butane storage depot down in Louisiana and the fact that there appears to be some signs of maybe a connection between the, the butane storage site and this giant sinkhole that's, that's uh, very close to it. Okay, well, the sinkhole continues to grow. And in the, let's see, about on the 17th, it... Uh, uh, 20 by 20 foot growth, and then on the 18th, uh, another 200 square feet, and then uh, just yesterday, another 25 feet. Um, so it continues to grow. Now, whether it's getting deeper or not, they promised us, the state of Louisiana promised us, uh, that they would, again, measure the um, how close it was to the salt dome. Now, you understand what the oil companies do is they drill caverns into the salt dome and so this dome is like uh, you know it's just all salt it's, it's salt it's solid salt and then they they take their drilling equipment and they carve out like a cave and then they uh, they use that to store extra uh, butane or methane or in one case um, Texas Brian was storing used drilling equipment now this was drilling equipment that well, they're also doing it they're also doing that, by the way. They're using it's the primary storage for all of the nuclear waste from Rocky Flats, and also uh, the chemical weapons that they 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 degrade chemically but are still toxic. Uh, they store in uh, salt mines outside of Dallas, Texas. But the main depot for all the nuclear waste uh, from all these nuclear reactors is being shipped, including Rocky Flats, to salt mines outside Dallas. Interesting, eh? Mm -hmm. It's also dangerous. Well, welcome back, and uh, we're joined with Alexander Bachman. And uh, Alexander, uh, you've got some pretty shocking information here to share. Uh, some people may fear it's over the top, but uh, let's kind of uh, vet it out and and uh, explain. You've got photos, uh, visual evidence, etc. Uh, what are you showing today? 
Thank you, Dr. Legal. Hello, hello, Ann and John and, Hi. and everybody that's listening out there. Uh, a series of reports have been, uh, you know, taking the, the web by storm. Uh, basically, uh, there are reports of naval, uh, naval conflagrations where at least, you know, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, Navy operating off the U.S. coast outside of San Francisco. This was reported first by uh, Kerry Cassidy out of Project Camelot, then was backed up at least by uh, a veteran who uh, has military contacts, Gordon Duff, by Veterans Today. He's the chief editor of Vet- Veterans Today. Uh, well, I, I've been, you know, behind this story ever uh, since July of uh, this, uh, this year. Uh, we've been uh, receiving information uh, that these underwater, uh, we can call them UFOs, but they're not necessarily UFOs. They're just craft that are non-human they're crafts yeah you know. yeah they're not human and uh, some of them are military uh advanced military weapons that are being uh put into operation in preparation for the the third world war so uh we have to discern which event is which and uh, according to uh, the information that we or, have or a uh, false uh, in, false ufo invasion or false ufo invasion which is one of the unifying things that the globalists wrote about in the council on foreign relations years ago Exactly. And it was also echoed by uh, not only Edward Teller, but also Werner von Braun himself made statements to that effect. So this is not uh, this is not ex- the statements of Alexander Bachman and Deagle. We're just quoting those who actually said this that are the founders of literally our modern science era, Dr. Edward Teller and uh, Werner von Braun, that only allowed the space mission to go to the moon possible. Exactly, and we've been uh, informed just uh, a moment ago, this has not been verified as of yet, that... Uh, in effect, an, an EMP weapon has been used or deployed over uh, the atmosphere over North America uh, this morning, and it was neutralized. So uh, things are going on behind the scenes, very important things yeah, are going that, on behind the scenes, that, and people need to be aware that, of this. Yeah, what, what I do is most of the time I keep within, I call the 10% of information that I think people are ready for, but I'm going to stray a little bit and kind of explain a few things. Firstly, okay. we're... Um, yeah, and I, I want to lay this out so people realize that this is not like open to their opinion either. This is just the way it is. Number one, <clears throat> you have to understand that our universe is very vast. There's 460 trillion galaxies in our universe. There's more galaxies in our universe than stars in our galaxy. You have to understand also there's also other dimensions. And what our Bible tells us is these other dimensions, these beings that are coming across, I call them, the best way to describe them would be transdimensionals. And in fact, even if you were a quote from a different part of the universe or another universe, you'd have to leap across dimensions to even go across time space. The time it takes to cross for light from one side of our galaxy to another is 100,000 years. So any kind of light-based craft would never get here, okay, or wouldn't get here in a reasonable period of time. If you're going between galaxies, you're talking about somewhere around between 5 and 50 or 100 million years just to travel from another galaxy, like the Andromeda galaxy is 5 million light years away from our galaxy. So any, quote, visitation, even within our local universe, is going to cause immense amounts of time if you're traveling at sublight speeds. Uh, Secondly, what you have to deal with is that we, we have been invaded and fiddled with and done evil to by what I call, and this is right through the Bible, through every ancient book, it talks about the serpent, it talks about uh, literally invading consciousness, invading our civilization with technology, dominating, creating special, if you want to call it, uh, over a class of, of a breed that we call serpent men. Uh, it's right there in the, uh, in, you know, in the ancient writings, right, if you know, from the understanding of the Naga in the ancient uh, Oceania to to the to, to the Chitahuri in South Africa and all over the world. So people should understand that right when it talks about the serpent, you're referring to specific beings that actually are significantly more intelligent than the human beings that are significantly evil. And um, there's been they collaboration the with these beings. Exactly, that are mentioned in yeah, the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and actually, the, the primary... Yeah. Yeah, the primary ones of them are, are called the... Uh, when you look at the sides of the buildings... In Europe, you'll notice this thing on the side called the gargoyles. They're actually referring to the Gorgons, which the ancients uh, worshipped, which is why the positions of the three pyramids in in, uh, the, in Egypt were actually pointed out as exactly in the positions of the stars of the belt of Orion. Because they believe that the 
these beings came to earth, and it says right in the Bible, 200 were descended to Mount Horeb and transferred technology to mankind. They were called the fishmen or the amphibious fishmen. They were you know, basically the superman that literally genetically uh, hybridized with human beings and created the giants. And people say, oh, well, that's all just theory. That's not true. I said, I'm sorry, you're wrong. That there was, it says right in our Bible that these things are happening. Now, what does that bring it down to today? <clears throat> and I have this right from Space Command when I worked as a civilian doctor there. 90%, 95% of these vehicles that we have are ours. We have an entire fleet of Aurora Space Fleet that used Tokamak fusion reactors. The reason why they took the Tinker Toy space uh, shuttle out, which was designed in the 1930s in Germany, <clears throat> out of service, is because we have entire fleets that travel not only to our moon base uh, on the moon, which has been there since the 60s, but we also have an operational colony on Mars. And uh, people don't want to hear this. They think, oh, that's all craziness. It's not craziness. It's just the way it is. No, there's, we there's so many yeah, deep uh, military uh, projects that go yeah, on. Yeah, I'm going to quote then. the director of Space Command. He said, we control every cubic centimeter of space between here and Mars. That's an actual quote from the director of Space Command. And, of course, he says, so you don't freak out. We're going to tell you all this stuff straight up. So you don't freak out when you realize that the world you've been told exists never existed. Now, where does it bring us to now? Why are all these things showing up now? Because uh, there's a, a battle, not just for our souls, literally, because mankind is a being just like, you know, we refer to God, which is to, so we can understand God, is a triune being. God is still one, but Jesus Christ was the fullness of God and flesh on earth. There's God the Father, which is the infinite God, that can't be kind of described in a sense the way we try to describe. That's why the Hebrews use 216 letters. And then we have the, the Spirit of God, literally, that indwells us. In fact, without the Spirit of the Creator being in us and every other living being, you couldn't exist. Uh, what There is a fight for the flesh of mankind and for our destiny, uh, and also for the souls of mankind and our civilization. And we're at the crux of history where... We are at the nexus of a cosmic battle. This is not just a battle of Earth, it's a cosmic battle. Uh, and so what we're seeing now is, it's written right in the book of Revelation, to send the globalists are actually looking at it almost like a template, uh, to sort of run it through so that they can appear to each other as if they're in control of it, when in actual fact, they know that the future, they've been written out of the book because they don't win. But the level of destruction they're trying to meet on the Earth right now with QE3, with an impending war in the Middle East, they want to push to start a thermonuclear, biological, chemical war. And if you, uh, people need to start realizing that what's going on with the Earth changes are going to trump all the craziness of these various factions that are fighting each other for control of the future world once they bring out their ancient ceremony of Pahanuk or the Phoenix to create, maximize the chaos on Earth so they can maintain and control and bring forth the new civilization which they crash the current one. So in a little... You need to get way out of the box to really understand this or you'll never make sense of it. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, we are joined by Christina Consolo. And, uh, and Alexander, I'd like you, before we, we transfer to Christina, tell us to summarize what you think of this data. Uh, you know, obviously this is pretty far out. And okay. Is it a big distraction because we have a, the impending collapse of the world economy? We have a move, I would say, step by step toward the Real ID. February 15th, uh, the Real ID actually comes into law, which means every American citizen has to be get a biometric ID on world standards. And by the whim of the uh, Director of Homeland Security, they can put an RFID tracker chip. The FBI are now suing every phone company in America to have a backdoor to every access to everybody's cell phone, GPS coordinates, and data or voice, etc. So we literally are walking, literally not blindfolded into the matrix. Well, it's and part of people the want program. to see QE3 you as a prelude to, to the Mark of the Beast, as explained this week. Watch. Look, right. at, on the main page, I have a video from an NSA whistleblower about the program, so you can understand how the Beast is going to come to life. So, yes, I, I concur absolutely. I think that we're being prepped and we're being beta tested, yeah. and I don't think that these underwater UFOs are necessarily uh, foreign. They're, they can also be military and domestic as well. Hello? Go ahead. 
Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, please continue. Okay, I'm sorry. There's a massive delay here. Uh, so anyway, yeah. the, the article that we write is because we do have elements uh, that have come our way, you know, intelligence information that we have been gathering for, uh, for years now that uh, attest to the fact that these underwater intra-oceanic uh, bases are already here, they are in operation, and they are hostile in nature. And yes, there is a real uh, foreign threat to the human species, and they are already here, and there is, they're starting their operations. Basically, they're cloaking themselves in the sky. They, they can monitor off our coastlines, and they can do whatever they want. I mean, the thing is happening, but it doesn't mean that all the events that we see uh, the Navy covering up are necessarily uh, extraterrestrial in nature. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we also don't see the the uh, the angelic side of this in terms of 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 literally angel meaning a messenger protecting uh, planet Earth and the human human population. Well, for example, March 2000 and, uh, 2010, I was targeted for assassination by the CIA. They sent a wet team after me because I published something online. What did I publish? That the fact that four gigantic craft landed in the desert of Israel outside of Tel Aviv, and they had a top-level meeting with uh, IDF forces to talk about the coming threat of uh, war in the Middle East and Z Syria attacking Israel and these forces guaranteeing protection to the state of Israel when these attacks start to happen. Yeah, so what do you think of this, uh, John or Ann? Which part? Any part. Well, I appreciate Alexander's journalism and uh, his efforts to get the truth to all of us. Uh, it's certainly cutting-edge journalism and something we all need to be aware of and pay attention to. Yeah, now, uh, Christina Consolo, you have some updates as well on what's going on in terms of, of uh, sinkholes and other areas. Yeah, I've been paying quite a bit of attention to um, just, you know, in the last few weeks we've had a noticeable seismic activity increase um, in the area of the sinkhole in Louisiana. There's more gas that's been bubbling up at the site from at least 20 new locations. Um, the area expanded about 1,000 square feet. That was posted uh, yesterday. And um, in addition to expanding, the DNR has ordered that all seven companies that are working on the dome to continue their investigation and um, they want them to flare and vent the aquifer. But in addition to it growing over a thousand square feet, they've had some problems with the drilling. In fact, the mud and the gas pressure was so great, they actually had to swap it out for a bigger drill a few days ago. And today, the drill bit on the stubbing rig had broke and had to be swapped out. So they're continuing to have problems, even with the massive machinery that they've brought in there to deal with this situation. But what was most concerning to me is the people that live in this area haven't been updated officially for six weeks. And they spent um, three days organizing a meeting that was supposed to take place last night. Um, WVLA, NBC, had reported that all the officials that were invited, there were seven government agencies and Texas Brines, to attend this meeting that was supposed to happen last night didn't show up. The only organization that showed up was Texas Brine, and they had very little information to give the people there. Um, in fact, they postponed the meeting for another two to three weeks. And um, so we're, we really don't know exactly, um, you know, what the integrity is of that dome and the, the problems that they're having with the machinery and the new bubbling and seismic activity really concerning and then we've had you know additional sinkhole reports coming in from around the Gulf of Mexico and uh, and still on the East Coast they're still fighting with some of the ones that they've had in Brooklyn they're they're having trouble uh, um, fixing them and by the way that's releasing radioactive uh, uranium and you had a report too about Russia in this area in the Barrett Sea where an old nuclear reactor from a submarine that was sunk and they lost a lot of submarines the Russians did during the Cold War this is a big deal story, and I remember we tracked it some years ago about liquid radioactive waste, and this could literally poison the uh, Barrett Sea and, and the Arctic, and the, the water tends to move cyclonically around the entire pole, so it can literally poison all the northern seas, including the North Atlantic, the uh, North Pacific Ocean, etc., and the Arctic Ocean. Well, that's right. Uh, the Russians uh, 
disposed of their extra any extra radioactivity. But then also when their submarines wore out, they or if they had problems with them, or if they you know they would just sink them in the in the Barents Sea. And and now they're saying that there's a possibility that one of them um, don't have it in front of me. It was 47. I forget what the letters were. Uh, could become critical. Now, why, what they're basing that on, I don't know. They just came out with this report this last week. But if they have an atomic explosion, um, you know, nuclear submarines contain a nuclear power plant. Right. So, right. You, so, you've got, so you've got fuel rods and you've got control rods. And it may be that that, that submarine has sat on the bottom of the ocean for long enough for the matrix that holds the fuel rods away from and the control rods has deteriorated to the point that they think the fuel rods are going to uh, get too close together. Yeah, they get what's called hot after a period of time. There's degradation in their modulating uh, rods, and as a result, the reactor gets hot. Right, and and they're saying there could be a criticality issue there. Uh, well, meaning that there could be a nuclear explosion under sea. From the submarine, and they're saying they're even pinpointing it to February next year. I mean, wow. I don't know how they. <laughs> how are they pinpointing to February? That's uh, unless they're using some exotic technology such as looking glass. I don't know how they would say that. Well, I don't either, and and I can't, uh, you know, I can't since the Russians wrote the article, and <laughs> and since they're the one that, that are saying that. Well, it could I'll tell you be. What, what I suspect. I suspect that the governments of the world know more about Earth changes coming. And they know that oceanic volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, etc., are coming because we're approaching a time and space where the everything from the magnetic flux fields to the uh, geomagnetism of the Earth to under oceanic volcanism is going to change so dramatically next year and thereafter that uh, they're predicting that this could finally crack these submarines and cause them to go critical. So, oh know. wait a minute! I just found the material and I misread it. The information that the reactors about the, it was the K-27 submarine right. that reachieved criticality and explode was released at a seminar last, in this February in 2012. So it's right. not going to explode. So yeah, I in other words, what they're saying is just the information was released then. Okay, that makes sense. Right. That yeah. seems much more valid. Now, uh, yeah, the, we have a number of reactors that are sitting at the bottom of the ocean that were releasing radioactive isotopes, and the Russians have gone back. We have that on top of the uh, Kiroshi current coming out of uh, Japan that brings radioisotopes to Alaska and down along the coast of uh, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and California to Baja. And it goes back well, there's, to... Yeah, there's so. a giant spike in strontium-90 and in cesium-137 in the, in the ocean off of Japan. Yeah. Uh, well, we're just... And by the way, the, the magma chamber for Mount Fuji is building. It's going to blow any day now. And when it does, the cheaper reactor site between Sendai and Fuji. Welcome back, and uh, let's do a little summary of what's going on with Fukushima, by the way. Let's hope that we have uh, no stray Israeli jets uh, trying to bomb the Pusher reactor. Fukushima is, I'm still seeing it spike up into the low 70s. And it spikes up to the low 70s and then drops pretty quickly. So we're seeing waves of radiation coming in. And uh, Arnie Gunderson stated this, when you pump in nitrogen to try to stabilize your critical reaction, it, uh, you end up flushing radioisotopes. And when you don't put enough, you end up with hydrogen generation, which can cause a hydrogen-generated explosion that can cause criticality and a nuclear explosion. So they're walking a tightrope. None of these places are, are stable. The situation is almost certain going to result in the evacuation of Japan if there's a major quake. The chances of a seven-level earthquake in the next six months to a year is virtually guaranteed. And if there's a seven-level quake, not only the reactors there, but the ones at Chiba are likely to go, and Mount Fuji, which typically has a radial area of 200 miles that it wipes out with uh, dust and ash. And it does it every four to 500 years really bad. Uh, the Japanese have an ancient knowledge of it. They're terrified of 109 volcanoes on Japanese islands, which are all volcanic. And there's a lot of apocalyptic literature. In fact, the very first nation that took my book, Clay and Iron, and with my permission translated into Japanese, were the Japanese. The very first nation in the world to translate Clay and Iron into any other language were the Japanese, within months after me traveling around the world in 1999 with a prophecy club. So, I think we're dealing with 
some very apocalyptic things. Uh, you know, if we look at the timeline here, we're almost certainly next year going to have a national ID by January 15th. That's four months. We are moving toward a the fiscal cliff, $500 billion being withdrawn from the economy. The radiation is poisoning our food, air, and water. It's being picked up not just in the northern but the southern hemisphere. They're pushing to start a war against Iran, which will certainly crash the price of, of food and oil race right through the ceiling. So we're going to see a major, not recession, but a full blue arrest of the world economy if they get away with this. Hopefully they won't. Uh, one of the positive things, believe it or not, from the narcissistic behavior of Obama is he's likely to get in and he will not support an Israeli attack on Iran. Uh, that's one of the positive things about dealing with the maniac Obama. Unfortunately, the other side is he's bringing in a green agenda, green taxes, carbon taxes, etc., and going to destroy industry in America and wants to bring in a socialized uh, Marxist-Leninist state. Uh, that's where we're going. We have two Hobbesian decisions that's just really both awful. Um, but that's where we're at. And people say, oh, well, that's, you're just exaggerating. You know, uh, that's, you know, in the last months I've had more, I call, prophetic panic attacks and, and standing open visions that are not pleasant than I've had in, in probably 24 years. Uh, I don't know you, about you, John, Ann, or, or Alexander, or Christina, but things are, as I say, getting stranger and stranger. I believe things are accelerating and they're escalating to a point of uh, shock. And uh, I, I think that if 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 all of us do the who do the research are are privy to information that not is not necessarily easy to you know to swallow because everybody's dependent on the mainstream media, which is lame in itself because they don't really care. The ones that do care, who are the ones that are behind reporting and publishing and doing everything that they do, which is commendable, are the ones that have to really be the ones who have to feel and know that something of huge shock and awe is about to hit us uh, and blindside us on a Tuesday morning. And yeah. that threat is a multiple threat. It's uh, terrorism. It's uh, world war. It's uh, uh, a foreign uh, enemy that we don't know necessarily <coughs> Uh, recently, but we know it's uh, angelic or fallen angelic in nature. We can call them aliens. We can call them whatever we want. But the the thing is that people need to start getting their spiritual house in order. And I believe that's you know that's the most important aspect of all of this. That people need to be ready for whatever imminent situation arises. But also prayer can help. Prayer and preparation, I call it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any suggestions, John, Ann, or uh, Christina? Well, Dr. Bill, we, we have the same list that we've been talking about for years of spiritual preparation, getting skills, getting supplies and equipment. And uh, time's a waste and time to get going and get going, get these things done. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we had the power out four hours last the other night, and I just sat, sat up in bed, looked all around, and for miles around here in North County, it was black, and we had everything from TV to uh, all our machines were working, our computers, and you even have backup satellites. So... No, we had no problems. It was like we just sailed right through it like it didn't exist. That's why people, if they're not prepared, they're going to get in a state of shock because one or more disasters are going to strike, and it's part of the process of breaking people down. That's why they like the idea of breaking the economy down, so eventually you're dependent on the government. Um, and the government's not going to be there. They're, they're not there for an emergency disaster. They're not there to provide food. They're not there to stop a plague if a biological weapon or even just a swine flu spreads. Uh, we do, uh, by the way, have a, a massive increase in number of flu cases two months early. That's not normal. And, uh, you know, I suspect this flu season is going to be much more vicious. It may be just a prelude to something worse that's coming down the road, but uh, there's a lot of people getting very, very ill from this flu that's going around uh, all over America. And, uh, you know, this is one of the examples of uh, the world is just changing so rapidly. People are often distracted. They've got their sports and their there are uh, other activities to keep them distracted so they're not paying attention to what's happening. The real unemployment rate is around 22%. It's probably going to go considerably higher before it gets really bad. Uh, they want to collapse the economy to the point where then they can bring a biometric world currency. Then they'll bring back the economy to some extent once you're willing to accept the fact that you can't have money in your pocket anymore. It has to be electronic divots in their computer. And they'll say it's all for your safety and for your protection. All you need to do is lean into the iris scanner have your facial biometrics, your body terahertz scanner, determine who you really are, 
And if you're not a persona non grata, you can buy or sell anything you want, which is right out of the Bible. You cannot buy or sell, say that you have the mark or the number of the name. The number of the name basically means a number, your number of your biometrics. That's what it means, I believe. Well, you know, I would recommend people, if they can go to alexanderbachman.com and watch the video called Vision of the Price this weekend, watch it with your family and come to terms with the reality that uh, the beast is, is coming to life. It's already here. And uh, not only in the United States, it's worldwide. This uh, beast system is already being implemented in Mexico, for example. Here, my, all, all children have been uh, uh, used as guinea pigs in biometric experiments. Now they have this nationwide ID card for all children. Now you can't, you can't issue invoices in Mexico, fiscally speaking, if you do not have a full 10-digit scan of your, hand, of your fingerprints and your iris scanned including your passport. Now, this was just out two weeks ago. You can't get a Mexican international passport unless you get scanned. And, uh, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? Yeah, you're a terrorist. You're a terrorist in your own country. It's just ridiculous. Right. Yeah, that's quite amazing. Now, the um, so the situation basically is a lot of people find this, uh, how can I say it, they think that we've gone over the deep end when we make these statements, even though you can prove it. Uh, even within the so-called truth movement, I often could refer to it as the bowel movement because instead of people go cross-checking the the uh, evidence, like the pictorial evidence that you show, or the evidence that John has from multiple sources, people will often make exaggerated claims or, or expand it, or they'll say, well, you can't possibly know that stuff that's not really going on. There's so many things happening on so many levels that people are overwhelmed, but they have to understand that whether it's 9-11, which we had the 11th anniversary of 9-11 recently, uh, that was a controlled demolition. We have to understand it was also an environmental uh, and as well as a financial thing going on there. There's the, the schemes are so complex that even if you're studying this full time, you can get overwhelmed. And the people even within the area that study one thing, they can't believe that somebody else knows something that's not an area that they're studying. So it it gets to be a lot. Uh, and I'm sure even when you look at experts like Alex who, uh, Jones is an expert on martial law, when he talks to financial experts, they'll say things that he's shocked at. And I'm sure the same thing goes with you, uh, Alexander, or John, or, or Christina, that uh, in many cases things are worse and a lot stranger than you ever anticipated could exist. They sure are. Well, yes, we find out things that are so out there that when we talk about them, you know, publicly, sometimes uh, people do see us as on the fringe. But we're not—we're not on the fringe. I mean, this is the real things that are coming out up uh, out of the ground or into our mainstream society via the mass media uh, controlling the subconscious collective of the human species in order for them to accept the the reality of what is uh, uh, coming upon us, which is a massive interdimensional war. For the for not the human species, but for our very souls, and I think that it's it's it's, it's very important to to understand that uh, our work, even though we can't uh, you know directly uh, quote the sources sometimes, is very valuable in itself because we bring the information out, we can uh, uh, enrich the information that's being uh, put online and help people understand objectively how these things are being played out. Yeah, exactly. Check out the websites, again, thelibertyman.com, homeland-defense4u.com, and Christina, your website is fukushimafacts.com, and alexanderbachman.com. Back again Monday and Sunday.